Hi, my name is Thomas Foster and this is a video for Ableton Live 10.1. In today's video, we want to dedicate ourselves to the topic of audio. How to import audio, how to change tempo and pitch and how to loop or reverse audio. All this in this video. So, have fun! So the first thing you do after you loaded Ableton Live is to be sure that you are in the arrangement view and not in the session view. So use this button here in the right corner to be sure to have exactly this view here. Um, we have now four tracks, two MIDI tracks and two audio tracks. As today we are just working with audio, we don't need the MIDI tracks. So I select the MIDI track uh, number two and use the backspace key to erase it and I do the same with the first track. And maybe we need some more audio tracks. You can do this here in the menu with insert audio track or with the command T. So if you want to use the same audio files I used, it's very easy. Just go to mugent.com, M-U-G-E-N-T. There is no login, you don't have to pay money. The most samples are free and they sound amazing. And you can search for instruments, you can type in a key or a tempo or a genre. Uh, what I did, I used the families, so I choose the red family and then you just have samples. They are all in the same tempo, in the same key and they have the same basic composition. So they fit together um, and simply click here free download and then you have the same samples that I have here the mutant red samples. All right. So the first thing we're going to do is we choose, let's say, the piano and place it on the track. And now we simply can listen to this. What we can do is we can cut it. For this, we select here a point and we use the key command, command E. And now we split it, the two audio files, and we can place now the second half over here. You can go in the corner to make it shorter and longer. Also here, on the right side, on the left side. And this is because it's already looped. If you double click, you see this here. But we come to this later. Um, the next thing you can do, you can select something and copy it with Command C. And then you can paste it to another place. Like this. If you zoom in here in this area, click and scroll down to zoom in, you can make smaller pieces and again command, select something, Command C, and command V to paste it and immediately you can do very fast something funny like this. And then you can select this and copy it and paste it again. And paste it again and again. To create something totally new. But we go back now to the original audio file, so I select everything, erase it and open again my audio file to have again here the full loop. The next thing you can do is a fade. So in the moment you place the mouse on top of your clip, you see these points here and you can click these points and move it to the right. Now we made a fade. If you don't see these points, maybe this button here is clicked. This is the automation mode. In this mode you don't see the fades. So be sure that this point here is not clicked. All right. You can make a fade in or a fade out. And you can work on the uh, curve of this fade, like this, to bring it down very fast or very slow. Mm -hmm. 
and you can fade between two files. For this I import uh, another file uh, called the synthesizer. Um, let's make a cut here with command E and delete the second half and we go in this corner to get this mouse symbol here to make this shorter here. We change the color. This is the green is the synthesizer. And now let's listen. All right. And now we want to make a fade between these. So we take again, we click on this corner and move it to the left. And now Again, a bigger fade. And again, you can take this point and move it to the right or to the left. Let's import our drum loop. And now we make a double click. And now we take a look to this window here. Let's close this information window here. We don't need it at the moment. Normally, if you drop in an audio loop, it's automatically going to warp it. That means you can change the tempo and the audio file is following the tempo without changing the pitch. Let's listen to this. I make a loop uh, from 21 to 25. I do this by selecting this clip and then I simply say Command L to make create a loop. And now we change the tempo. And make it faster. What was happening? Because this audio file is already cut it perfect at the beginning and at the end, so it's exactly four bars, so it was easy for Ableton Live to find out the tempo of 126 BPM. Because the warp mode is on, when we change the tempo, the tempo of the loop is following. If the warp mode is not active, it's like this, then it's not change uh, following the tempo. The loop gets longer and shorter. If Ableton is not able to find out the tempo, let's activate the warp mode again, you can type it in here because all the names of Mutant uh, already have the tempo in it. You see here 126 BPM. So if Ableton is not able to find out the tempo, you simply say let's type in here the tempo 126. And normally Ableton also is activating the loop if the audio file is short. So here we have four bars in a loop. The loop start position is one, that's at the beginning, and the length is four bars. Now see what is happening if I change this, if I make the length shorter like one bar. This point here is moving to one bar. I can make it shorter like one quarter. A half quarter means an eighth. Or I even can make it shorter like this. Or you can choose another start point like this. In this case, I want to loop two bars. And now I can make it here in my arrangement window as big as I need it. Let's import some other audio files. Um, there is, for example, a bass. There is a piano.
a synthesizer. Brass section. And the lead synth. <laughs> Isn't it funny? All right. And you can activate and deactivate clips with the zero key. So if you don't want it, but you want to keep it in your arrangement, you simply deactivate it with the zero key. Let's make a little break at the end of our phrase. So we want to stop the drums for like one bar. And we want to create a little break. So let's go to this part here. We copy it and um, with the command D, we duplicate it. Zack, zack, zack. That's very easy. And maybe we reverse the ending. Let's listen to this. You see, just simply by clicking here the reverse button, we can hear it backwards. There is a little click, you hear this? That sounds not nice. What we can do is make a little fade here. Better. Let's listen to the whole break. So let's say you want to change the pitch. You activate all instruments that where you want to change the pitch. And here you have the transport wheel. Let's go up one note, means two half notes. It sounds not perfect because the point is you have different, different algorithms to make the time compression. So let's activate bass, piano, synth and brass and move to complex. That sounds pretty good, right? Just for understanding, for beats the best thing you can choose is beats. For solo instruments like vocals, like saxophone, uh, strings, the complex Pro is the best one. And for harmony instruments like guitars or keyboards, complex is perfect. So this is just to give you an idea. You always should listen what sounds best. So sometimes you want just to pitch one note. It's very easy. Um, let's listen to this here. Let's say we want to pitch this part here one note up, port, wheel. Let's go up one, let's change the color to see better what we are doing. Let's listen again. Okay, let's activate it and again we go up two steps to make it one note higher. Or maybe you want to Pitch it just a little bit. Let's say somebody was singing and the note is not perfect in pitch because it's a little bit too low. So you also can detune it in very small steps. Let's listen to this. Yeah, sounds not nice, sounds wrong. But sometimes that's very useful. My name is Thomas Foster and this is my YouTube or Facebook channel Thomas Foster Music Production, which is all about music production. Here you will find tutorials on the most important DAWs or music programs, the most important plugins and I'll show you how to produce the current sound of the charts and the clubs. If you have any questions about this video or more generally about music production, just write me in the comments. I'll answer all your questions. 
Of course, I'm also happy about the simple feedback or suggestion for another video. Do not forget to subscribe to my channel to not miss any of my videos. At this point, I say thank you for being there. Always stay creative. Cheers.